Hey guys, Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Summer NAMM Show. Talking to Mike Volts from Gibson, the Memphis division that does all the semi-hollow and hollow body stuff, right? That is correct. And we got Tyler Morris, who's an up-and-coming awesome player here. Thanks for joining us, Tyler. Um, Mike, you guys have a whole bunch of new stuff at this show. Right now we're talking about this, uh, which yes. is the 235. This is the ES-235, uh, which we're so happy to have Tyler playing. But this guitar was inspired by the old ES-125, and a lot of us sort of, that was one of our first guitars uh -huh. growing up. And I love the iconic shape, the cutaway, and what we wanted to do was just get more of a rock and roll machine. So we took the 125, we brought it down in, in dimensions a little bit. It's got a Les Paul neck on it. It's got a, a maple center block, um, humbuckers, and, and we're off to the races. The guitar is amazing. Well. When he's playing, it's amazing. <laughs> cool. So, all right. So, what's the? You're talking about the lower bow is what is it like, 15, 16 inches? Or? Yeah. The whole guitar itself, we just shrunk it about 10 percent overall. So the whole thing came in just a little bit. You know, still got that same 50s cutaway. Yeah, 14, and then. It's got the, the center block like a 335. So you've got your maple center block, uh, the burst bucker pickups, which sound great in this guitar. It matched up just, just perfectly. It's a little bit thinner. So it's very comfortable, it's very light, and uh, it's just fun to play. And we're, this is it, today is the first day we're introducing this guitar. And it's gonna come in a sunburst, cherry, and the black. Cool. Should we have Tyler play a couple other pickup positions for us? Would you mind? Cool. Have at it. Nicely done, oh, Tyler. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Thank you. All right, Mike. So you want to give us a quick rundown on some of the other models yeah, from let's the go, Memphis let's division? Do that quickly. We're going to start right over here. Iconic 335 dot. Only this year we've got one out with P90s in it. So this is really the first time that we've ever had a 335 with P90s. You know, other than one uh, wonderful artist model with Luther Dickinson. So this this guitar is great. It's a, MHS pickups is wonderful to play. Sweet. Let me move and we're right through. This is our new 335 dot in graphite metallic. 57 classics. It, it's got the Premier CPA. And again, it's it, it's your 335. It's just a great guitar. I dig the, that finish. The, yeah, the new color is wonderful. So and let me grab another one. Okay, he has 335 and Cherry. This is the iconic guitar. Classic. Yeah. This is it. This is a classic, and we're bringing it back with the dot inlays. We had gone away from the dots for a while, um, and we're just bringing it back in just a rock and roll machine. Sweet. It's all there. 
So, looks like you have a whole bunch of finishes in the 335. Oh, oh, that's got, oh, that's oh, awesome. Do. Yeah, this is a new blueberry burst, and it's on our 335 figured a featherweight. This guitar is amazing. We're using quarter sawn Adirondack spruce braces on this, and what we're doing is thermally aging the braces and the center block, and we're weight relieving the center block. It's got a tone chamber. The guitar, it's all new, it sounds great, but it's still all the classic design. And in this, we're using our own Memphis Historic Spec humbuckers, and they're, well, when you play it, you'll know. They're Sweet. Great. So other than new finishes on some of these, are there brand new models besides the 235? Well, we're about to get to a brand new model. Okay, cool. And, and these, although you can't see it, the inside, the, the tone is brand new. I mean, when you put thermally aged wood, it's a new guitar. So we're going, and we're going to move up to the last two. Okay. This, this is new. Okay. What's this one called? This is called the ES-275 Thin Line. Nice. We came out with a 275 little jazz box, oh, about three years ago. Okay. And it did, it did very well. Um, we had a request to have a, a smaller jazz box, better fret access, just a little more contemporary. It worked, it, it was great. You know, we started, you can see L5, it's iconic Gibson. Again, we put the Les Paul neck on it, so you've got better fret access. And this year, we've added the thermally aged center block and braces, so we've got this classic looking jazzy guitar but actually based on a 335. So it's a cross. Cool. Is this like a wood little gasket or is that? This, this is what was used in the late 50s and it actually serves a purpose. It doesn't rattle at all. So it's a grommet and it uh, Because of the hollowness That's of right. the body vibrates the switch yeah. sometimes? Yeah. So it, again, it form, a follows, form follows function. It looks really cool, but it, it's there for a reason. Cool. So this guitar, we're very, I'm excited for this. How much is that going for? I don't have the prices with me right, right. now. I'm sorry. Just Google it. <laughs> I design them. <laughs> All right. All right, so last up here. And last, but of course, not least, ES355. This year, we're putting it out with figured wood, a natural finish, which is very unique for this guitar. And again, it gets the best of everything. The potentiometers are, are CTS 550K. Plus or minus five percent. They're very. They make them for us. And then when we get them in, we measure every one, and they label it with the resistance. We set them aside and we build the, the control pot assembly with match sets. It makes it makes a big difference. So not you're not just going off of the labeled value. You're actually measuring the value because there's always variances. And we're doing. And we've got the tightest tolerance they can make. It's plus or minus five percent. 550k. You want you, you know you want 500k. So by doing a tight tolerance, it's right here all the time. And but we actually measure every one and we match them up. It takes. Is it that takes just in the? Is that just with the Memphis guitars or across the board or? It's just with the Memphis guitars. Little extra care. It is. And our historic, all the historics get that treatment, and the nicer you know the top of the line. And again, it's matched up with the MHS pickups. And this year we have the MHS-2, uh, which is very similar to a T-top. And they, they sound, they, 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 the clarity, they've got the warm, you know, and they've got sort of a spank. I mean, you hit them, they just like, bam. They awesome. So, well, well, thanks for showing us all this stuff, Mike. We're going to hop over and have Al John show us some of the other Gibson USA stuff. Thank you for coming. You guys, you guys rock. I, I love Premier Guitar. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Always a pleasure. All right, guys, now we've got Al John, old friend at Gibson, who's going to tell us about... Oh, and we got Doug here, too. Doug's going to play for us. We've got the new... This is the Humming Hummingbird Rosewood Avant-Garde. And the great thing about this is it's got the inspiration from the traditional Hummingbird, but with a smaller body, uh, body thickness. So it's a lot more comfortable to play. You also have a really comfortable fast neck on it, so wow, I mean, you can play that for hours. It's got a nice curve inside, so it doesn't feel rough around the edges or anything like that. It's a super comfortable to play, and uh, 
I think a great thing about it is people love the songwriters, the songwriter series yeah. of Gibson Acoustics. This is just a more comfortable form factor, plus the rosewood back and sides gives it a really nice tone, just across the board. Great highs, mids, and lows. All solid woods? All solid woods. All solid woods with that nitro lacquer finish that Gibson's known for, plus a dovetail neck joint with high glue, so it's got great tone transfer. So you got that in a really nice new package, and I think it's great because... Yeah, let's see that. Yeah, you got the cutaway. You're ready to plug in and play. So you know. mahogany and spruce, you said, right? Uh, well, it's a Sitka spruce top, but it's got a rosewood back and sides. Oh, that yeah. almost looks it's different than a normal. It almost looks like mahogany yeah, on the grain on that. One. Yeah, you would think. We know typically when people think of a hummingbird, they think of mahogany back and sides. But we wanted to do this uh, rosewood guitar uh, with a little bit of inspiration from the hummingbird. So that is the hummingbird rosewood as uh, avant-garde. So yeah, sweet. Should yeah. we have him play it now? Play it. Play along. All right, Doug. Sounds nice. All right, should is there anything else we need to know about the acoustic division, or should we move well, on to Gibson USA? Well, just keep in mind that we have revamped our avant-garde guitars so that you still have that comfortable neck, thinner body. So we have a series of those, and our icons are not going away. So if you want a hummingbird with mahogany back and sides, vintage, vintage, the icon, the J45, the J200, we have that. And like all of our other guitars, we have the ability to do made-to-measure customized guitars. So let's say you want a hummingbird with maple back and sides. We can do that. So we can customize it with a made-to-measure program. So just about any guitar from Gibson you want, dream up, we can build it for you. Sweet. Before we move on to the next, the last guitar, I think, um, how much does this go for? Why did you have to ask me this? This is a, <laughs> this is a 2019 preview, man. Oh, sorry, preview, sorry. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people, are. we have plenty of videos where they are like, yeah, we just finished it last night. We don't really know what we're going to charge yet. So. Literally fresh off Memphis, flown here in dry ice, packed up. No, I'm not really. That would not be good for the. That guitar, would be that would be a cool story though. Yeah, but, but the stork dropped them all off. They were all just born yesterday, so you know you got to make okay. sure. Yeah, the two, tune yeah. in, tune into Premier Guitar or Gibson.com, and we'll have those prices there for you. Hopefully, we'll have those around, uh, right around fall, late fall, Christmas time. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So now we're talking to Matt from Gibson Historic, right? Matt, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Yeah, it's yeah. been a great it's, show. It's pretty loud here, public day. We got Jeff playing. Uh, what's he playing? He's playing our new 2018 59 reissue. So this is a uh, an exact copy of a priceless uh, 1959 Les Paul standard. Uh, there were only about 1,100 of those guitars made, so the values of them are approaching a half a million dollars. We build an exact clone of the original. Uh, they sound alike, they feel alike, they play alike, and obviously they look alike. So. Now, you guys have been doing this for a while, right? So what is different about them now versus the last couple years? Yeah, so it's been an ongoing quest uh, with the historic program to, to you know, approach clone level accuracy. And 2018 is the first year where I really feel like we nailed it across the board. So we're using uh, actual uh, scans of original necks. We've, we've probably scanned over 100 uh, vintage Gibson uh, guitars at Custom Shop. Does that mean you've changed the profile of the necks yeah, a bit? So in 2018, we're using a, a slightly uh, a shallower neck profile that, uh, in my opinion, is a little bit more accurate to the original guitars. They're, they're actually a little bit slimmer and not as round as uh, a lot of people think. So it's a really comfortable neck A little more D-shaped, you mean? Or? Yeah, uh, I, almost a little bit more V-shaped. So you're losing oh, okay. some of the cheek on either side. Uh, the depth is almost the same, but you're, you're losing some of that cheek on the side. The result really is when you grip onto this neck, you instantly feel it's the most comfortable Gibson neck you've ever played. Okay. Any simple. other updates to it? Yeah, so uh, basically all of the parts that we're using now, it, another part of the ongoing quest, so every single part on this guitar is an exact copy of the original parts. So even the plastics, we've gone to extreme lengths like melting down original plastics, examining the chemical comp composition, and then reverse engineering from that. So it, it's so that's in everything from the, the <laughs> plate around the pickup selector to the sur pickup surround? and the pick art? Exactly. Original fonts. We're using real Catalan for the switch tip, which is a 50s material that's 
you know, nobody's using <laughs> except us, really. Um, what about like pickups? Are they any different? Yeah, so we're using uh, custom bucker pickups, which we developed for the True Historic series a few years ago, and I've never heard anything bad about these pickups. They're proprietary for Gibson Custom Shop, so the only place you can get them is on your custom shop guitar, but they are uh, developed to sound exactly like the late 50s PAFs, and, and they do. They sound incredible. Okay, anything else that's new about them? Uh, yeah, so we went with a, a new scheme of colors for the Sunburst guitars. So uh, for 58, 59, 60 Les Pauls, as you may know, the original guitars were almost exclusively vintage Cherry Sunburst, but they faded into different colors over time uh, because the dye that they used faded in sunlight. So uh, this is one of four all-new colors for the first time in, in almost 20 years that we've introduced a new lineup of colors. So this is a color called Royal T-Burst, which has a little bit more brown up top, a little bit more red on the bottom. We have a color called Dark Bourbon Fade, which kind of has this fade out just like uh, Pearly Gates, the famous Billy Gibbons guitar. Uh, and then we also have a, a beautiful Honey Lemon Fade, which is kind of a lemon burst with just a hint of the brown at the top. And then we also have a Vintage Cherry Sunburst, uh, which is uh, basically exactly what the guitar would have looked like from the factory brand new. Okay. So. so what is like the starting What's like the price range on these? So uh, for the 58 uh, reissue, we're looking in the mid fours, $4,000 range. And for the 59 reissue, you get the highly figured maple top. And those are going to be a uh, retail price of $64.99. OK. Should we have Jeff play this a bit? And then we're yes. going to talk to someone else in the acoustic division? Sounds great. Jeff, take it away. Cool. a couple other pickup positions. You wanna? Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Matt. All right, guys, last but not least, we got Jim DeCola, one and only Jim, awesome Jim. Many awesome Jims at Gibson, because we also have Jim James here, who's playing for us. Jim, tell us about what we're looking at here. Here we're looking at the new 2019 Les Paul Classic. The Classic is, uh, as the name implies, it's a classic version of the Les Paul. We have Zebra Coil 61 Rhythm and Treble pickups. Uh, they're the 61 spec when we started using Alnico 5, so they have the classic PAF voice, but with a bit more high end and volume from the Alnico 5 magnets. We and to clarify from the, the Les Pauls we looked at before, these are Gibson USA. Yes, they are Gibson USA pickups. And uh, we have, uh, you know, the true specs on these. We have the nickel hardware. And uh, with the electronics, we have true 50s wiring, uh, the way the, the circuit is wired. So they're wired to true 50 spec. And we have true historic 50s taper pots. So uh, how much of this is different from the standards that were available up to now? Up to now, uh, the Les Paul standards w over the years evolved, right. and we had a, many different varieties. The circuit... Say last, like last year's, how last are the, what year's are the main standard, differences? Uh, last year's standard actually has the same circuit as the Classic does this year. Okay. So we, we incorporated the circuit, which has four push-pull pots. The Classic before just had uh, the standard Les Paul no, no wiring splitting. Okay. with no splitting or any of those features. So for this year, we incorporated the four push pulls in the Classic. When they're down, it's true 50s wiring with 50s uh, spec pots. Now you have coil splits or, or taps on each of your pickup. We have a in phase or out of phase if you want to get the Peter Green out of oh, phase nice. sound. So that's new to the circuit also. It is it is new to the circuit. And then lastly, we have the pure bypass. So you could have your pickups uh, say they're tapped out of phase, you know, for a nice funky rhythm sound. You could pull the pure bypass on the treble tone and that'll route that bridge humbucker directly to the jack. So at the same time, when everything's down, it's just the classic Les Paul wiring. Okay. So is the circuit stuff the what's mainly different on these 2019 models? Yes, on, that's primarily the difference. We have the uh, nine-hole traditional weight relief this year, so it's it's the, the middle-of-the-road weight relief. We have some models like the traditional that don't have any. 
the standard has the ultra modern and then the classic has the nine hole. It's okay. still substantial, still has the classic sound. Is there kind of a range on the weights for these ones? Yes, and, and like I said, this would be the middle, so it's still going to be substantial. It so like eight pounds or something? Yeah, it's going to be between eight and nine. Okay. So it still feels very substantial. A lot of people are going to pick it up and not realize that it really does, just because guitars can vary so much. Yeah. But, um, but it is uh, pr provided to weight relieve it. Also, the neck is the early 60s slim taper design. So it's a, a bit more uh, manageable and faster for those players who like a slim taper neck. Is it a, different from the new neck shapes that we saw on the uh, uh, Gibson Historic, which are a little bit more V-shaped now? We were just Yeah, the V-shaped is going to be more to 50 spec. Okay. So in, in 60, 61, the Les Pauls, like the 335s and other guitars from that era, had a slim, slimmer taper to the neck. So it's a, a kind of like a rounded slim taper, more oval shape. So it's a very fast neck. Uh, some players like the larger 50s style, but for those players who like the, the slimmer neck, this is very fast. We have the rolled over, uh, rolled binding, rolled edges. So it's a very comfortable neck. And, uh, and then we also offer other models that do have the 50s rounded profile. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about the new uh, changes, or should we have James play for us? He's pointing to something on the back. You want us to show the back? Oh yeah, yeah. Lastly, I'll show you the controls. So we have genuine CTS pots. These are a new series of pots they developed for us. So they are, like I said, CTS, but they're push-pull. They're very durable. We tested them over many years. And we also have genuine switchcraft jacks and switchcraft toggle switches. So like I said, when the controls are down, it's stock historic 50s wiring and 50s taper pots. But now with this new series of pots, we can afford to offer a variety of uh, four push pulls that is would be very cumbersome to do in a hand wired scenario and much more reliable than a hand wired scenario. Sweet. All right, should we have James play a few things? Absolutely. <laughs> the in phase out of phase it's cool sound you don't hear so much on the less ball that little bit of a Gretschy tone in there, so it gives you a lot more variety and opens up the palette a little bit. Awesome. Thank you, James. Jim, do you want to tell people where to go online to find out about these guitars and all the other ones we've heard about? You can visit Gibson.com online to see our full range of Gibson USA guitars. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com.